Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my review for the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy's Earthrise RC. Now, this particular toy is, I believe, in the second wave of the Earthrise toys, which I know some people are having a difficult time getting, um, but uh, I want to give a shout out to Anthony at HNE Games for sending this to me, uh, because I was on the fence about getting her simply because I do have the Takara Legends one, which I will show you during it, the course of this review. And her, her uh, artwork here is really nice. It seems to be more based on that Takara Legends or the actual animation model with some of the actual toy mixed in. But it is still a good looking toy from what I can see. And I do look forward to opening her up. So without further ado, let's sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's transform and roll out. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Okay, so before I start with this review, I wanted to show you guys the stock images of RC, what she looked like when she came out of the box. Unfortunately, uh, my hat, my RC had a lot of QC problems, and if you had saw my video about me complaining about QC, you would know I already had a lot of issues with her. But just taking a look and seeing the toy in and of itself, you can tell like there are a lot of things that were missing. There were a lot of paint apps that were not right with this figure. Uh, there was uh, the fact that her back was not fully painted. It was white plastic. The fact that she had these big, ugly pink slippers that just did not look right on the figure at all whatsoever. And a lot of people obviously want to complain about certain issues with the toy. And when I actually show you the toy, you'll be able to see. I didn't like the fact that she had a clear gun. I didn't like the fact that she had no paint on her face. There was just way too much stuff missing. And I also had a major QC problem, which you can see here with the uh, the backpack itself. I had a clearance problem with the toy and I showed some pictures of it. What I actually did was I ended up taking the, t the toy apart completely. Uh, and when I did, I was able to um, get a exacto knife in there. I had cut some of the plastic so that it was a little bit smaller so that the two pieces matched together a lot better. And then once I did that, I had gotten some Gorilla Glue and put it in there and pressed together for a good two minutes and then let it sit for a good day before I even touched it. And then once I put, you know, take, take the backpack off, uh, I brought her to the operating table, which you can see Wheeljack and Ratchet uh, helped in getting her ready and prepared. I took her apart completely and, you know, Wheeljack made a pretty big mess, as you can see how many parts are all over the place before I went to town and went to work on this toy. And I think the result, which you can now see... Here is the finalized result of Earthrise RC as I've customized her with all of her uh, backpack glory, just so you can see some of the work that I did to make her complete. Now, uh, I can go over with you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this toy, because is this a good RC figure? It's an all right one. A lot of people really don't like it. Some people have enjoyed the posability that this figure offers. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think that this customized version is the way to go if you want an affordable RC figure. There's just a lot of good, a lot of bad out of this thing. Now, taking a look at the figure itself, uh, there were a few things that I wanted to do. I ended up painting her... Uh, feet white. I ended up painting her ankles gray. And then I decided to take the plastic bits off. I had painted it first and then I was like, okay, I'm going to cut it. And then ended up not cutting it as straight as I wanted to. And unfortunately, uh, I didn't cut it very straight, which is fine because these are the back of her feet. 
and uh, you kind of cut like right where the um, the five millimeter port is so that you don't lose any parts when it comes down to ankle tilt because that is the thing that her figure does have is that she still has ankle tilt to be able to move as she needs to. And she's really, really poseable. That is one of the cool things about this figure. You can get her in a variety of poses. She has you know, bicep swivel, she has, uh, you know, wrist, her wrists is kind of like the one problem I don't like, you know, I'll, I'll send it back if it's more than a twist, if you guys are familiar with the um, college humor uh, video, I wish she actually had better wrist articulation, but the fact that her, uh, her hands are actually better poised to be able to hold blasters, that is a much better thing than the previous toy, and I'll give you guys a, a rundown when I actually show that to you. I ended up, when I took her apart, I painted this piece here uh, white. This should have just been white plastic. I don't know why they did that. Like just, I mean, it, it's just kind of like one of those things where you're like, why did you do this? Why couldn't you have just painted it? You know, the other uh, thing here is, is that the backpack here is removable. You don't necessarily have to have this attached. And I'll be honest with you, I'm never going to have this thing attached because this whole thing is just an eyesore. It's a big giant weight on her. And yes, even with the honky tonk feet, her, this on her back weighs her down. So what you do is you press on this little button here and it kind of gives you a release and then you're going to just kind of pull out the rest of that plastic. I'm going to put that to the side so I can show you the rest of the toy. And you can kind of see some of the glue. I don't know if you can kind of see it there. That's kind of sticking out a little bit. That's where I actually fixed the problem with her backpack. And when she's like this, she's got a great profile as it is. Like, doesn't necessarily have to worry about anything else. She can stand really, really well because of the ankle tilt that gives her a lot more posability. You know, have her stand as you need to. And I'm messing around with the toy, of course. So let me just get this out of the way. <clears throat> and getting a closer look at her, you know, I ended up painting her back here uh, because for whatever reason, they decided to make the whole back piece here white plastic. They couldn't make it pink, and then you ended up having to paint maybe the gray. No, they just made it white, and it didn't look right. And with this part, he, these parts here being pink, didn't look right at all. So I ended up painting these white. Uh, I had gotten magenta and flat white paint to match a pink that, you know, makes it very similar to the same color plastic and the paint that they use on her front here. The only thing is, is that I also painted her gun, which you can see, uh, and by doing so, that gives her a little bit more of a cartoon accurate color scheme. The only thing is, is that uh, when I ended up painting the tab that sticks out, this tab is a little too tight, which this is supposed to be her gun storage, which is a terrible place. They really should have put the gun storage on her leg here. It would have been a better place for her gun storage, but you can, if you want to, uh, put her gun here on her back, and that is perfectly fine. Um, so she can, you can have her stand as you need to, and she stands really well. Uh, she, she does, her, her head is on a ball joint, and I do want to point out my mistakes. Um, my paint on her face kind of came out a little cakey, and that's because of my own fault in painting it. I mixed a red and a white paint, ended up painting her face, it dried, and then I got a toothpick to get the lipstick on her lips. And unfortunately, I had a little bit of a shaky issue, and as the paint began to come down, it smeared all over her face. And then I had to wait for it to dry. And then I had to scrape that completely off. And I tried to clean it as best as I possibly could, ended up having to paint it over uh, once more, and doing the same thing over again to try and get the lipstick on her face right. It's hard. It's really, really hard. Um, the other thing that I ended up doing was I painted her collar uh, on the back here white, as well as painted her neck. Since I had fully disassembled her, it allowed me to be able to paint her neck as I needed to, and I painted the uh, bottom parts of the ears there uh, the Leia buns gray, and it gave her a much better look. I also painted white here, and I'll show, when I show you guys the car mode, 
you'll be able to see all of the custom work that I did to her. And I think she came out phenomenal, personally. You know, to me now, this is like probably going to be the RC figure on display. But she does have a little bit of competition. Now, I'm just going to give you guys the reason why I actually do enjoy this figure. There a lot of RC figures over the years, first of all, those of us who are 80s kids... We didn't get an RC figure. If you were growing up in the 80s, they did not make RC. Uh, instead, they you know, made a BotCon exclusive Black Arachnia repaint. They made a, uh, and then the first re retail release for RC was the Energon figure. And good God, getting this figure to stand is a challenge. You know, and when I had first became a, um, you know, when my wife and I first got together, when we first started dating, this is the RC figure that came out. And you can see how much she knocks everybody over. So, yeah, not a fan of that toy. So, um, the other thing that this toy also has is the ability to turn the backpack into a hoverboard. And I want to show you the paint that I did because it's it's crazy. The uh, box art for the toy shows that this is gray. These parts here are gray, but it wasn't. Out of the box, this was just pink plastic. So I made sure I painted that gray. I gave a nice white stripe along the back. I gave her tail lights, and I also used a leftover Toy Hacks label for a uh, Autobot symbol vanity license plate. So this actually does, and I also painted the um, antenna pink as well, because I think that's supposed to match the animation model. But one of the cool things about this particular figure is the tabs on her feet will allow you to have her ride a hoverboard. And this gives her a nice little stand to be able to stand on. It's almost like uh, the G.I. Joe stands you know, that had come out, you know, a couple of years. Actually, I think they still use this, the uh, display stands for the uh, three and three quarter inch figures. Um, but that's what you can do with this particular toy is give her a, an, an actual stand. Now, the RC figure that I think is probably the premier uh, RC figure, and a lot of people say that is the best one, is the Takara Legends one. Um, this is... You know, I don't care for the color scheme out of the uh, Thrilling 30, but I wanted a more cartoon accurate RC, so I ended up paying the extra money to get the Takara import, which gave her a much more cartoon accurate, you know, color scheme. The problem with this particular toy is she has literally the entire car, entirety of her car as her backpack. It doesn't fold in at all. And her posability is a lot more limited. She can still get in a lot of poses, but it's harder to get into those poses. And her tra the only thing I will say is that this one incorporates an actual transformation. This RC figure is a literal shell former. You know, this is where I had said that they should have molded in the pegs on the sides because she can hold her guns as she needs to. Um, and even though you can kind of see that they, they gave her a lot more, um, you know, they gave her a more cartoon accurate color scheme, you know, her proportions are a little off and they actually based her masterpiece, her upcoming masterpiece figure off of this mold and her stances. So she kind of looks a little weird. She looks a little off, right? So that's kind of why I really like the Earthrise RC figure as a robot. I just think that this one has better, you know, it's a better transformation, number one. It's a, um, you know, it's a better transformation, number one. And it's also, um, you know, it has light piping on the eyes and it, they did go the extra mile and painted her face. But again, this is a better uh, robot, but the transformation is kind of one of the worst things. And one more little cutesy RC figure I'll show off here is the Robot Heroes RC. And that is a little cutesy thing that uh, had come out at the time because, you know, at the time they did not see very highly of G1 characters. And this was as much respect that the G1 RC character got in the uh, 2000s. 
And here she is with Takara Legends Windblade, Siege Chromia. So you can kind of get a nice little, uh, you know, trio of Autobot sisters um, that run around and start beating Decepticon tail. And I think that they look really well together. Okay, and for some more comparisons, here she is next to my customized Siege Springer, my customized Siege Ultra Magnus, Takara Legends Target Master Cup, Takara Legends Blur, and the standard size for Power of the Primes, Rodimus Prime. So we get a nice 1986 movie uh, scene going on here, and you can see how nice RC displays with all of them. And if you want to see my review for him, I will be doing a review for this guy, my customized C, uh, Earthrise Optimus Prime. If you guys uh, really want to see that, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section. But let's get her all set for transformation. Okay, so getting her ready for transformation, we are going to, first of all, take her off of the hoverboard there. And we're going to take her blaster off because this is not where we're going to store it. Then what we're going to do is quite simply unfold all of the tabs here for the front of the car and then you're going to see how I customized this as well by giving it some paint and then to get the rest of her car ready we need to actually attach it like so so that it's folded out and and what we're going to do is we're going to attach it. Now, the thing is, is that the release lever here, you have to get this side in first to attach it. And it's kind of tricky because sometimes, especially if you're trying to do it on camera, it doesn't want to quite go in. I think it might actually be easier if I fold these in first. There we go. Or not so much. Like I said, it's tricky. You have to kind of like get that hook in just right to be able to get the hook in there like so. And then once it in, she's literally wearing her car, which is one of the most ridiculous transformations ever, really, honestly. Like, this is probably one of the worst shell formers. A lot of people have turned her head around. You don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, what that you then do is we're going to fold her down like so. And get her arm straight. Get her completely in there. And then she sits flat like this. Now, this is one of the tricky parts here because getting her legs to transform properly with the rest of the car is really really challenging and uh the instructions actually tell you to uh like it's like a weird way you're supposed to fold them you're supposed to like turn it over like this and then they fold up and turn over like this and of course you would have like the parts that are sticking out and then it's supposed to like her legs are literally supposed to turn over in like just the right way where like this clip will actually like attach to it so it keeps her flush. That's really what's happening is is that like your your idea the idea is to keep her flush um underneath so that her robot mode becomes a smooth enough undercarriage so that when she becomes her car mode there she is. And in her car mode, she rolls. Very, very simple like that. Um, I don't care for this car mode because the transformation is not that good. You know, it, it's just, it's the one of the worst shell forming next to like, I would say maybe Cybertron Thunderblast. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you have to get these clips 
to clip in like so, because uh, getting everything lined up. But in car mode itself, from the top, it looks fine. Especially if you added my little, like I added the gray here, because the reason for that is because this is supposed to actually be the front fender of her car, which this is, but there's no transformation happening. So, <laughs> you know, at least it matches somewhat. And if Toy Hacks actually did something like maybe gave us some headlights here, that would be awesome. Uh, because I used a, an extra label that I had to make taillights as well as the Autobot symbol on her back for a license plate. So that at least in car mode, she is functionally all right. And her gun does snap in just like so, uh, does stay in for storage, you know, pretty well. Uh, even with the paint, it's not that big of an issue. I didn't get it in there. There it is. And then once it's clipped in, she's able to roll without any issues. But, just to see what she looks like next to her other counterparts. Okay, so for a little bit of comparison with her in vehicle mode, here she is next to the Energon motorcycle. Uh, which is probably my least favorite version of RC, probably next to uh, the, the triplet sisters. But um, then you have the Takara Legends. Now, this is where you get to see the difference between the two, where you get to really see uh, which RC car, like the, the car for the Earthrise is better as a car, but the transformation into a car is done much better by the thrilling 30 mold uh in general obviously this is the takara legends one and you can see how the undercarriage on her transforms which it basically is a robot folded up so when you're actually comparing the two this is where you really get to see it but i still think both are pretty good when you compare you know in comparison it's just that the Earthrise needed a lot of work just to make it work as a car, you know, because of all the missing paint details, whereas the Takara Legends one um, only suffers from the fact that there's parts of her that are not covered in car mode because it's part of her transformation. This is her actual leg, and, you know, the chest plate itself is what becomes the hood of the car. So I still think this is a good, you know, mold, but it's it's really a toss up between the two when you're breaking down the two cars. This one is a lot smoother looking though. Then for a little bit of comparison with some other female transformers, here is Chromia, the from Siege, and here is Takara Legends Windblade. So again, this is the idea of having the three female transformers of that have become more popular as the years have gone by. I still think RC is the best out of all of them, but that's my own personal opinion. And because he needs a gunner, here is Siege Springer in car mode to compare with RC, since uh, this was a scene in Five Faces of Darkness when they were driving um, to go chase after the Skuxoid, uh, if you guys remember from Five Faces of Darkness Part 1. And further comparisons, here is Cup. Blur, Ultra Magnus, and Rodimus Prime. So you get a good glimpse of all the 1986 cast lined up and ready to go. And I'm actually gonna go even one step further and put RC and let's get a cup up here so you can see awesome car carrier mode with Rodimus Prime leading the charge into battle. So let's get, so let's, let me just transform her and let's get this uh, show, wrap, show wrapped up. Now, overall, I do think that this RC figure is a good representation of the character. It has a lot of flaws. Uh, my custom work, at least I hope, has brought the figure to be better than it is at retail, which is really telling, uh, which is something that this character deserves. You know, RC deserves to have awesome toys 
made of her. Whether it's the G1 design, whether it is a uh, modified version that transforms a little bit better, um, or, you know, if it's a better proportion masterpiece because, you know, a lot of people are looking at the masterpiece figure and saying, you know, hey, I uh, don't really care for it. But if you are willing to put the time in and try and get a good customized figure uh, version of RC, uh, at least I hope that the things that I have done have brought this figure to be a little bit better. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of the figure itself? What do you think of the custom work that I've done to it? And, uh, you know, do you think she deserves more, uh, better toys of the character. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have many more Transformers discussions, retrospectives, reviews, and news coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned for all that. And as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.